so this goes to something I was actually going to talk about uh, on another blog or blog post. And I'm not going to go into depth here, but um, so you'll get a lot of people that will say, um, you know, people don't need to learn the self-defense um, techniques because if you get to be a really, you know, tough purple belt and you train all the time and you're athletic, you don't need, you know, your, your jujitsu will work in place of learning the self-defense techniques. And my thought was like, that's great if you can train three times a day, you're keen and Cornelius, you're athletic, you're explosive. That's what not about, true. What about the 57-year-old secretary who that's can only point. come twice a week? Well, it's not even that. Right. Keenan's going to get old one day. Right. Yeah. Right? He's not always, uh, sorry, life doesn't freeze you at 21. So, so what 21-year-old Keenan doesn't need it? 21-year-old Keenan is also six foot whatever. Right. He's jacked to the gills. Right. You see the guy on the street, though he looks like a nice guy, you know, he's a beast. Right. So you don't mess with that guy. Right. Right? Keenan at 95 years old, hunched over, right? right? Cruising his walker to the bank. Right. Not saying he could defend himself, but he at least needs to have an idea of what he's doing, or maybe he was in his 70s, right? right? And so maybe all the jiu-jitsu that you've done has given you some injuries and has limited your speed, limited your strength. You haven't worked out for years, and life is catching up with you, right? right? What are you going to give to your kids? What are you going to give to your children? What, what are you going to show them at home, right? Or take them to a school to learn? The grappling part is great. Everybody needs to learn the self-defense. Should it be 100% of your focus 100% of the time? No, I don't agree with that at all. Right. And the reason why I don't agree is because Jiu-jitsu should be fun. Your training yes. should be fun. Right. And whatever that fun is, and whether that, you know, a lot of guys just want to roll hard. Right. And that's great. But we also need to learn our self-defense. Right. Right. So you can have a mesh of very solid self-defense guys, and and very accomplished grapplers at the same time. Right. And they go hand in hand. Right. You might be better on the mats rolling when you initially start, and and you're picking up in the peripheral your self-defense, and it shouldn't be a peripheral, right? right? It should start when you when you first start jiu-jitsu, you should be really heavy in the self-defense. Right, right, because that's what you need. That's what you need, right. right? That's day one, because you'll see so many people get this new skill, like, oh, I can, you know, now I know jiu-jitsu, I can fight. And right or wrong, people do this, they go out and they wind up in a fight. Right. Right, or they wind up putting themselves in a situation because of their ability to fight. To fight, right. they put themselves in a situation that's not a very healthy situation, and they have to fight, right. and that's when they need to learn the self-defense, right. right? And then you go through your career, and you continue to refine your self-defense, and you become more and more efficient at it, right. just like every other technique. Once you become a black belt, you can learn the technique much faster, right? right? So the amount of time that you may spend on your self-defense may go down, right. and you may spend more time on rolling, but it doesn't mean you don't refine it. I still refine my self-defense every day, right. right? Every time I get together with Hoist or the Valente Brothers. I learn a lot about the details of the self-defense that I know. Right. It's a super complicated thing, but I don't think you have to. They're not mutually exclusive. No, absolutely not. Because, well, for me, um, you know, people will misunderstand sometimes when they think they say self-defense. They're thinking like, oh, he grabs your collar, you do this. Right. It's a lot of just, you know, I have so many guys come to my school. They're upper belts, blues, purples, whatever. Right. And, you know, they're beasts on the mat until a punch starts getting thrown. Right. And then it's not that they can't eventually figure it out. That's my point. Like, if you take a good purple belt, you start trying to punch him, he'll eventually defend himself. He's going to take some damage, possibly. You know, you may knock him out, but he's going to take damage before he kind of makes up what to do. And for me, jujitsu is always about efficiency, right? That's so right. if I want to, you know, like, I got an argument with a guy one time about this. He said, you know, oh, I, I'm a brown belt. Somebody got me in a headlock. I tried it at school. I got out. So of course you did. You've been working at it a long time, right? But you didn't get out cleanly. You didn't get it out efficiently. Just because you got out, because you've been training long enough, you roll. It's the same as if I had you come into the school. You're an athletic guy. I put somebody's Thanks. side control on you, and I say get out, and you just throw them off. And I go, well, he knows how to get out of side control. Don't need to teach him. Right. Right. No, I'm going to teach you the most efficient way to get out of side control. Because eventually, you might not be the strongest guy. You might not be the strongest guy. And so you know, the idea that you would be efficient. At passing daily heat guard, right? Oh, strip this grip, bop, bop, boop, bop, bop. Do all these really detailed, cut the knee this way, this. So you spend hours getting the, the efficiency on that, but not on how to block a punch or how to clinch fight or any of those things. Um, but that said, um, people don't stay in jujitsu for 20 years because of the self defense. They stay in it because of the fun stuff. That's right. Rolling and like, um, I, told, I think I told you the story, your brother, Drew Culberth, uh, the 
Are you both brothers, the only two world champion brothers in North Carolina? I think yes. you are, yeah. right? Um, so Drew Cole was a phenomenal competitor, uh, super great guy. Um, he came to my school one time and I had him teach a Daily Eva class, right? Who, which he's phenomenal at. And one of my students who just signed up comes over and, and I'm very self-defense, I'm probably one of the most self-defense focused schools in North Carolina, sure. right? And my guys are completely behind it because I believe in it. Um, and we spend a lot of time blocking punches and all this, but and we spend. But I also teach all the sports stuff. He came to me and he goes, "Man, I, I, I really love the self defense, and that was, and I really love when we're punching and all that." He goes, "But that was so much fun." I go, "Yeah, it should be, right? Yes, doing the. I mean, I think he taught baby bola, you know, the baron bolo intros and stuff like that. And the guy had a blast, right? Like, yes, you should never feel like it shouldn't be like your class is." You know, here, eat your broccoli. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. You want, <laughs> you want some dessert sometimes. You want, and you know, you want a, a wide spectrum of food, right? You don't want to just eat broccoli every day. Well, uh, you, 100%, right? Yeah. It, but also, what makes jujitsu fun is the endless combinations of things to do. Right. Right? So, originally, when we were learning self defense, I grab a collar, he does a grip breaker, he does a self defense technique. That's cool. We, we're learning this technique. Yeah. But now in a situation, depending on what the surroundings are in your environment, right. you're going to do part one. Right. And that's where so many schools stop. Right. They stop at part one. Oh, this is the self-defense technique. The guy does this and he gives you a pull and you step through and you do right. this and you put him in a hammer lock. Okay, good. Now the guy twists out of the hammer lock. Right. And now he's coming back at you. Right. He's throwing a punch. You need to block. So the stand-up self-defense becomes like ground grappling, right? Because we, we've got to get it from there to there to right. minimize the risk, right. right? My risk of getting knocked out on the ground are much less than my risk of getting knocked out by somebody standing up, right? right? And the distance controls that and being in close yeah. and all those kind of things. So if you go to a school that understands the concept of what real self-defense is, right? Self-defense is always the first reaction. Right. It has to be correct, right? Your motion off their first action needs to be the right thing. When you reach right. in your toolbox, you better have the right tool, right? right? But then what if that tool breaks? Or what if you didn't use the right tool at the right time and your timing was off and you missed and now you've developed a flow? Well, that's just like ground wrapping. Right. Yeah. Right? We start ground wrapping, we have an infinite amount of possibilities. You have the old smash style. So if you don't play the old smash style, go learn it. Right. Right? And then if you're really good at the smash style, open up your game a little bit. Right. Play with the transitions. Play with the, the variations that people present to you. And you'll find that they, they interconnect and your efficiency, just like you talked about earlier, will go way, way up. Right. And then again, what's your goal? Right. Right? So no, I, that's, a, that's actually right. I think we're, a lot of places have problems with the standing self-defense, which I, I teach every class just simply because that's the beginning of a fight, right? That's right. The most efficient way to survive a fight is stopping in the beginning, not when we're down on the ground rolling around and I gotta worry about people kicking me and, guys pulling weapons and stomping me and rolling around on pavement. But I think it's exactly the right way, right? People, they, they learn self-defense, they'll go, some schools will teach what, like a once a year self-defense week or something, right. which is just, it's useless, right. right? And they'll come in and they'll do it very statically, he grabs you, you do this, this. And of course that looks like it's not gonna work. People go, it's like karate doing a kata. Well, the first time you learned a triangle, it was like a kata. That's right. right? Coach didn't show you a triangle, then I resisted at full speed and smashed a triangle. And you go, well, try, everybody would go, triangles don't work. That's right. Um, you practice, you know, first time you learn to pra pass a daily heaven guard, right? The guy's not resisting at all. He just puts himself in position. You do that. Then it builds up to resistance. Yes. And the same with the standing self defense. Most schools don't get past that initial part. So it looks very boring and kata where the guy's going like this. Throwing a punch. And you'll find that in coaches that, that, that do the self-defense but don't believe in the self-defense. Right. Absolutely. Right? right. You and I both 100% believe in, right. the, in the need for self-defense right. and for the self-defense aspect and the fighting aspect of jiu-jitsu. Right. right. I completely agree with Elio's philosophies on what jiu-jitsu should be. Right. And that's one aspect of the game and then there's there's the other stuff that's fun. Right. Right? Yep. And, um, and, and so it depends on what your goals are as an academy. Right. It depends on what your goals are as an individual. I have many, many people that just come to my fundamentals class right. and repeat it over and over again. They get their blue belt and they only come to fundamentals class right. because they love it. Right. And that's the efficiency that they want and they need and right. they want to become experts 
at all the nuances of those fundamental moves. Right. And they don't care to get out there and roll hard. They don't ever care to compete. Right. But man, what an awesome person to have in class. Right, right. Is the person that's learning and refining the basic techniques. Right. Because those are the ones that are gonna work when you're old, you're frail, right? right. So you can't, you can't discount them and just say, oh, I'm gonna learn, you know, spider guard or spider and lasso and, and collar and sleeve control, right? right? Because, well, the person might not have it on. The other thing you'll find out when people become more efficient at jiu-jitsu and they become better at jiu-jitsu and they're surrounded by people that are really good at jiu-jitsu, you're not gonna find yourself in those situations. Right, right, right. The, the situational awareness goes way up, which is always your first line of self-defense, is know where you're at and what's going on, know your surroundings and know you're out. Right. So people understand that, they're also less likely to go out and get into an altercation with somebody, right, in a right. bar or something like that, because hopefully they're not out consuming too much alcohol in a bar and deadening their senses. Uh, one, two, they also train with a room full of, can I curse on your thing? Yeah. Badasses, right? And so they know they're not the baddest guy on the planet. Right. And so knowing that you're not the baddest guy on the planet will bring some humility to your life. Right. And you don't want to run into that guy who is very unassuming, <laughs> right. who's really good. Right? right, and so you know there are guys that exist out there like that in jujitsu. I don't want to be in in a bar or downtown or out partying or hanging out with my wife and and find that guy and get embarrassed. Right, right. <laughs> just keep my mouth shut. I'll say I'm sorry and I'll go away and I'll leave the situation. So I think you find that too. You know, it, 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 as people become more efficient with their jujitsu or, or or learning a martial art, is that they don't they don't wind up in these altercations. If you're going out and intentionally getting into altercations to test yourself, right. you're an idiot. Yeah, because I, I think that's one of the sort of myths um, that jiu-jitsu or any martial art um, breeds in us that we, we forget about, right? Which is in class, whether it's boxing, Muay Thai, grappling, right? We're in a safe environment. It's just you and me. You don't have any weapons. There's no, no other people involved. There's no obstacles. There's no, there's no legal repercussions. That's right. And so we think that if I go out and get a fight, it's going to be the exact same way. Right. I'm going to grapple you. I'm going to t take you down. I'm going to choke you out. Not somebody's going to stomp on me from behind, or I'm going to go to jail that night, or I'm going to lose my job. Or, or I'm going to slip on a spilt drink. Right. Or the guy's going to have head. a knife in his pocket and stick me. Um, but you see, people worry about the guy having a knife in his pocket and sticks you. That's great. Right. But what about when you slip on a on a, on a, a drop beer, right. fall down, hit the bottle, and the bottle stabs you? Right. That guy didn't even have to have a knife. Right. Right, one of my friends in a fight slipped on the floor, head hit a pool table. Luckily, right. he fell when he collapsed. His head was under the pool table, right. and you know, he wound up with some busted up ribs. Um, but if his head would have been outside the pool table, they'd kick him in the head. Right, this guy can fight. Yes. But what happened was he slipped. Right. Yep. There's no. He didn't get taken down. Anything like that. Nope. He didn't. Yeah. Um, so I, I think absolutely right. Like. Um, you know, I, I wrote about this a while back. I called the yellow belt disease, right? Uh, from the Taekwondo days, right? People train, they get their yellow belt, and pretty soon they're out, and everybody they look at, they're kind of hard eye, and you know, they're not looking for a fight, but they're certainly creating the environment for a fight to happen. And then what happened to them? They get in a fight. They get, and then they get knocked the hell out, and right. then they go, and they go, well, this martial art didn't work. Right. right. No, the martial art works fine. You just didn't train very long, and then you put yourself in a position where the chance of you losing could be very high. Or you went and got liquid courage. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and you forgot that now your senses are, 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 you know, your reaction times are slow, right? That's right. why you don't drink and drive, right? Your reaction times are slower. Your decision making is off, you know, all those kind of things. So, yeah, it doesn't work so well. So back to the, the sportive situation. Um, you, um, even with your focus on sort of the old school and the self-defense, but you also one of the top sort of modern jiu-jitsu instructors around. And I know a lot of students who compete, even at other schools, or almost especially from other schools, will come to you when they're preparing for big tournaments. Um, why do you think that is? And there's nothing against their instructors. No, their no, instructors are usually very cool with that. Yeah, it's not, it's not that. The, the reason, well, okay. As a school, we, right. a very small percentage of our students compete. Right. But they want to compete. Right. There's a lot of benefits in my in my eyes to competition. I hate competition. Right. I hate competing. Right. I do it. Why? Why did I jump out of an airplane to prove that I could do it? Right. right? Uh, to test myself. Right. It's the personal struggle for a lot of people, and I have students that are exactly this way. Um, their biggest personal challenge that they've ever overcome 
was walking into on a mat for a jiu-jitsu competition. Right. They've never been in a fight, don't want to be in a fight. Probably would never get in a fight. Nicest people, sweetest people in the world, right? And But they've never had a personal challenge. They've never had a struggle right. in life. So that internal dialogue with yourself when you're walking out on the mat uh, is tremendous. You know, we talk about it, everything is relative in life, right? If you're if you're a three-year-old girl and somebody rips the head off your Barbie, that's the most traumatic thing that can happen in your life, right? Right. But as an adult, your house burning down is equally traumatic. You're right. both going to cry over the situation, right? right? right. And, and and so um, I think that those challenges and overcoming those are supremely important. They also come because I understand what happens in the game when people are competing. I study it. I pay attention to what's going on. If you're going to compete, right. you need to know everything right. because you don't know what that person's going to be good at. Right. And that's my whole philosophy is learn it all. Right. It doesn't mean it has to fall in my game or be part of my game, right. but I can assure you of this. If you don't know it and somebody does a technique to you that you don't know, right. you're going to get caught in it. Yep. And, you know, if you didn't know that technique was a possibility, you might not have had the stops in place originally to prevent it from happening, right? right? If you can prevent prevent that situation from ever forming, right. then then it's a non-issue. But but if you're there, you're there, and you, you know a guy goes deep half, right. as ridiculous as that is, guy goes deep half. If you've never been in deep half, you're getting swept. You're getting swept, yeah. and you're probably going to get passed, yeah. right? And so you're going to have more problems. So. I think my open-mindedness is, you know, why people will come seek me out because I'll go break down film or I'll go study somebody who is a, a master of that particular technique and, and try to pick it up and develop it and uh, see how it works out and share it with people so that when they get into a match, right. if they're going to compete and they get into a match, that they're able to hold their own. Right. Yeah, exactly. The, the goal is to go out and make them fight in your game, but if you get in their game, you have to. Like I went to a Soka school in New York, and, you know, uh, I'm friends with one of his black belts, uh, super nice academy, they were nice to me, and um, they, except for Soka, it's funny, they all did deep path, and every single one of them, blue belt enough, got me in deep path. None of them swept me with it, like I know how to break it down and how to balance in it, but I was impressed that they all got me in it, just because I don't deal with that many people who do it here. Right. I, I have a few guys who are good at it, like Isaiah is very good at it. Um, and so I've learned how to deal with it. But I was really impressed. I just didn't know the entries that they were setting up. That's correct. You so know? if you had gone up there and not had any exposure to deep half, yeah. it could have been embarrassing. Yeah, because they would have swept me every single time. Every single time. They're like, yeah. oh, that black belt's a joke. Right. Right. But it's, you did this when you went to tournaments, right? When you were competing real heavily, you would get there. And we knew that if you could get their back, they right. couldn't get out in the, in the period of time yeah, that was allotted. I, I figured, but the, for me, that's always the fear when I go out to compete, right? I'm like, oh, man, is this, this guy could be a triangle master. I don't no know. I did. Yeah. Right. And to me, that's the valuable thing, right? Because if you get this, uh, I've said this numerous times, you should compete even if you're 100% self defense. Because the idea with self defense is if you and I are out in the parking lot and I get up on you, you don't know what I know. That's right. I could be the worst slappy fighter. I could be, you know, Mike Tyson about to knock you out. You have no idea. I could be a great wrestler, right? You have no idea. So having that ability to tamp down that fear and be prepared for everything and be ready to put that in action. And, and an unorthodox be, fighter is the hardest person to fight. Yeah. And, and unlike um, in class where you're rolling with your buddies who even if they're going hard, they're taking it easy on them and you know, right? I know if Jason does this and puts his hand in my collar, I've got to watch out for that loop choke. But if I didn't roll with you... Well, i got to tell everybody. <laughs> if I didn't roll with you a lot and you did that, I, I wouldn't know. Right. I'd be probably, I wouldn't be blocking that arm very aggressively. Um, and so I think that's that's both uh, illuminating and fun, right? Right. Like, I like rolling with guys where I really know their games and they really know mine because it really does become a very technical battle. It does. And, and, and at the end, like, I think there was one time, uh, I don't know if you remember this, it was at, at the Raleigh School, I think you and I one time rolled for like an hour. And we were going pretty hard. And I think it was, we figured it was like 57 minutes or something. And at the end, I was I, I was exhausted physically to an extent, but I was more just mentally Mental. exhausted because we were just at each other with just the, the games and the tricks the whole time. Yeah, and, and but that's fun. Yeah, no, that, that was one of the best, most fun times. It's what's kept us going. Through. I mean, me and you have always had just phenomenal roles and just fun. Right. Right. 
and trying new things. Not nice, but yeah, yeah, but no, they're, can, we're into each other, right? But, but it's still very fun and technical. Yeah, and I'm willing to try new stuff right. to see if it's going to work. So I can figure out what to work on or what did you do to stop it, right. right? Because that may be what I'm more interested in is what did you do to stop what I'm trying? Right. So if I get in a match and somebody tries what I'm doing, right. how to stop it?